How about if I grab a little more? Oh, oh, oh. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. We are here right. back again for a Thursday. And uh, and Think and Link, Brand New World, is uh, live. Uh, and we're going to have a wonderful discussion uh, with our two guests. And um, we're going to have them introduce themselves in a moment. Uh, but before that, we want to make sure you have a little bit of background on what this whole thing is and why we do this. Uh, we are a uh, special projects firm here in Minneapolis, Capsule, and um, we like to deliver some interesting, curious, and inspired content to our audiences and uh, to our community. Um, it helps us, it helps other people, and all we ask is that you show up, listen, be inspired, socialize, hang out, suggest speakers, whatever, um, whatever you can do. Um, my co-host, Kelly Layton, um, also is, is going to do uh, the first question um, as I stumble through this part of the conversation. Um, if you want to know more about Capsule, I think uh, you can find it at capsule.us or someone might put something in the chat perhaps, but feel free to ask questions in the chat um, as uh, this goes on and um, we will be having a really interesting conversation. So I'm going to hand it over to Kelly. Kelly, take it away. Thank Please. you very much, Aaron. Um, and Elizabeth, Aaron, great to have you. We're so excited about this conversation we're going to have today. Um, very well caffeinated conversation um, we're going to have today. Um, but uh, yeah, I feel like that. Um, but before we jump in, would love to have you both give us a little background around yourself, your journey, what brought you here today. Um, and, uh, and then we'll jump into our questions. So Aaron, I'll start with you. If you could give us a little background. Yes, of course. Well, I'm going to start with who brought me here today. And that's my friend, Elizabeth. Yay. So this is a treat all around. Aaron Kelly, huge fans of your work. And Elizabeth texted me. I was sitting at, actually, Elizabeth, you don't even know this part. I was sitting at House Salon, one of our favorite places in the Twin Cities. And I got a text from Elizabeth being like, so I have this opportunity. You want in? And I was like, with you? Yes. <laughs> what is it? What's the opportunity? So that's what brought me here today. So thank you for having me, everyone. Um, I'm, I'm really honored to be here. Great. My background, um, most people look at my resume or my background on LinkedIn and they're like, okay, explain to me how you went from test prep to business school to you know CPG, to a startup, technology startup, to healthcare, to more startups, and now to food and retail. And it does definitely look like a this situation. Um, I learned pretty early on that I'm really only effective when I'm doing good things with good people. So for me, I look for purpose-driven brands and that's taken me on a lot of different paths. At one point in time, it was me creating a, you know, a technology startup called Red Stamp. Um, for me, it's, it is about doing good things with good people. So that's my background. And again, you know, everything from General Mills, awesome experience there, very purpose-driven as well. Um, to, you know, health insurance, now at Caribou Coffee, where I'm the VP of Global Brand, which is a term for CMO. There you go. That's me. Love it. Thanks, Erin. Yeah. Very exciting background for sure. Elizabeth, let's talk about your history and experience. Okay. Well, thank you for the warm welcome. Erin is underselling herself. She has been a mentor to me. She has connected me with one of my favorite jobs, which was um, for all of you locals on here, um, working for MSPC as an editorial director and also General Mills as a client. So, and then she served as an advisor for me at my mo most recent venture healers. So this will come up again and again in how we have, um, built our businesses and our careers with incredible women, especially in the Twin Cities. So I'm not there any longer, but I still work with a number of writers and editors. So my background is all editorial, corporate communications, Target, Nordstrom, MSPC, also um, an accidental influencer. I started a blog in late oh, 2008 or nine and beauty bets. So I was really in the beauty space for quite a while. Thought I would always stay there. Um, woke up one day to five and a half million Pinterest followers. And that sort of like changed my life. 
and allowed me to work with incredible beauty and wellness brands. And somewhere in there, I really got curious about healing um, on a selfish level and started working with everyone from psychics to acupuncturists to going into the middle of the desert and getting equine therapy. And I just really fell in love with these healers and practitioners and they changed my life. They saved my life. And that became my next mission, which was healers. And that started as a podcast and grew into a marketplace and almost like a talent agency for all of these healers who are so focused on providing their services and their gifts, but don't love to market themselves. And that's what I know how to do and tell their stories. And um, we, so we had one-on-one -on -one services, we had events, we had content and built that during COVID when people really needed a lot of virtual support. And I think Early this year, I started talking to what I think of as like the Nordstrom to my Jenny Kane or my boutique business, mm -hmm. um, Well Set, and they acquired us this spring, and then I went along and am the head of content there. So we can talk more about Well Set, what Well Set is up to, but that's the nutshell. I love to. That's fantastic. You guys have such interesting stories to tell. I wish we had three hours for this conversation. Um, there's so much to talk about. Uh, but thank you. And uh, why don't we jump in? Because I know we've got a lot of topics we'd like to try and cover um, in the hour we have together. And I want to start with, we you, you both touched on this um, now, and we've alluded to this in past conversations, um, with regard to the physical digital and how brands are creating experiences for their customers and consumers um, through both of these channels, if you will, or in environments. Um, you know, we've talked about the, in the past physical stores, um, QSR retail, um, you know, led the way and technology was the support. And, and now, you know, life starts with our devices and informs and guides us, <clears throat> pardon me, into the physical spaces uh, that we prefer. So I'd love for both of you to share your views on this shift and what brands are doing to unite the physical and digital experience and really reinforce brand voice, certainly for, for Caribou, certainly Elizabeth and your endeavors. Um, if you could both share, that would be fantastic. Erin, um, let's start with you and then Elizabeth would love to hear your thoughts. Okay, awesome. Um, first of all, I love this question so much because it's such a tangible example of what's behind almost every single marketing question. And mm -hmm. it's what I know, because I know a lot of people on this call, thanks for joining. Um, it's what a lot of people on this call know as well. So I think it's it's great for us to talk about it and explore it. Mm -hmm. um, it's just knowing and serving your key audiences, right? So for Caribou, knowing our audience, it's team, it's guest, it's community, and it's our partners. And it's being really intentional about being obsessed with how we can best serve them, serve with love, right? So it strips out the channels and the noise and all of those things and lets us deliver against our purpose, you know, utilizing our core values. And that's what that's what it looks like. So um, I think the brands that do it best are doing exactly that. They're just not letting the channels get in the way. And, you know, simply said, saying like, if, if someone says, you know what, I want a mocha. I want a, a mocha from Caribou. It's going to the app and being able to say, what's the best way? What's the most, you know, enjoyable way for me to get it right now? Caribou, you do that thinking, you know, and right. you serve it up. And also, by the way, not only for the guest, but for our team members, right? Because we, we really think about them in every interaction, what's going to set them up for success to serve mm -hmm. with love. Mm -hmm. So that's what digital has done for us in so many ways. It just strips out the noise and just gets right to helping our team and our guests. Right. That's great. The experience, again, it goes back to experience design and thinking yeah. through that's intentional. Thank you, Erin. That's great. That's a great perspective. Elizabeth, your thoughts. I'm taking notes, of course. <laughs> I always take notes when Erin talks. Um, well, I was really, I, I didn't know if without in-person experiences, especially in the healing space, if what we were going to do in COVID. I mean, what we were going to do as humans, mm -hmm. uh, let alone how that was going to work in business. I'm a huge fan of one-on-one -on -one 
sessions, just like I'm a huge fan of retail. I'm a former lifestyle editor. So that whole, the aesthetic, the things you can touch and feel and the people you can connect with are at the core of everything um, that, well, that most of us do. So I didn't know what we were going to do with that. And, and so I went into this business model thinking, do I even like virtual experiences? Does mm-hmm. anyone? And what we found with healers, what we found with WellSet is we had been trying to sell what we thought was this really intimate one-on-one experience. And we had far less traction on that than we did offering free virtual experiences, Mm -hmm. classes, workshops, um, whether it was breath work, whether it was, um, oh gosh, acupressure, you can do at your desk because you are tired of sitting there for 12 hours a day. And that is what people wanted. So knowing that we didn't lose any of that community and any of that connection in that virtual environment was eye-opening. And to Aaron's point, having that accessibility, like to go on your phone and get support, get a coffee, get support from a, from a holistic practitioner when you need it is, is invaluable even more than it was pre COVID because people are really struggling. So there's a way to do it. Um, And also I think looking at how can you still create that community when there's a device between you and that's something we're still trying to figure out. But I could go on and on about this, but I also think that comes down to the people that are on the other side of the screen too, your colleagues, who you employ and how they're interacting with your customers. So still relationship-based. Right. I think, okay. can I just say one thing? Cause Elizabeth yeah. you said, yeah. I'm taking notes too, by the way. Please. So. Please. <laughs> um, but the one thing I will say, you know, what you just said too, is it's about the experience in the digital properties. Mm-hmm. And like, we even just, you know, anecdotally, um, we have trivia in our app, right. Which is something that if yeah. you go to caribou, you love the trivia at caribou. It's like a thing we hear all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just a little delay. Our trivia, people are now just going onto our app and doing trivia Let's every do day. Trivia right? Wow. So it's, it's really interesting. And that yeah. picked up during this virtual time. It's, you have to definitely, mm. that's a whole other side, which Kelly, maybe mm. we're going to get into later. So I don't want to jump ahead, but it is a whole other side of understanding your brand and what right. delights, right. And then being yeah. able to pull that forward in all the channels. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Because it's beyond convenience. Obviously convenience right. comes with these digital right applications, but it's really, it is how are we continuing to build a community and connect? So it's great guys. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. What a great start. I know. Uh, For those of you taking notes (laughs) and everyone else taking notes, we do record this and put it out on YouTube and you can subscribe to it. Um, So, you know, you'll have it forever, which is great. Be a little inconvenient. What a great know. use of digital channels, Aaron. Oh, fascinating, <laughs> isn't it? How that works. Right, right. Yes, yes. Um, you both have uh, a wonderful um, uh, affection for design. You can see in the work you've done and the brands you've been in, in connected to and been involved with. Um, and, and we have to say design in this conversation at least once. That's kind of the criteria. So that's really what we're doing right now. Um, but <laughs> the critical role of design, there you go, right? Yeah. The aesthetic of this, the, um, the, the barriers to entry, have they been, uh, they've, they continue to be, um, lowered as it come, as it, as it relates to products come to market, new offering, new services. Um, it seemed to be the case before the pandemic, it seems to maybe accelerated during the pandemic, but then there's all kinds of other stuff feeding into that. Any insights on that as far as your entrepreneurial backgrounds? Each of you have really fascinating entrepreneurial background. You see that and the role of design um, being important in that. Any other insights into that? Erin, do you want to take that one? I know you no. <laughs> Okay, I gave this one some thought. Design is really precious to me, and I think to Aaron too. I mean, on a personal level, this is a passion of ours. I've learned to not be so precious about it. Someone said to me not long ago, look at Craigslist. We don't care. I mean, they, I don't, they're using like courier font. It's black and white. No, 
but it does the job. So mm -hmm. yeah. in startup land, I mean, I'm serving as the head of content, the creative director, like, you know, it's, there's no agency. There you go. There's your entree, Aaron <laughs> Keller, <laughs> sell me on your services. But um, we have to be super nimble. And when I also look at what is going on on TikTok and Reels, these are these are not brand, th these people aren't building brands based on things being polished and perfect. They're authentic, and so this is another thing that's very much just a work in progress in my mind. We have to present a brand. We have to create an environment with design, whether it's UX or whether it's you know visual elements. But are we still serving the customer? Are they still getting what they need? Is it easy for them? And do they want to hang out with us? So that's the end of my statement. That's a great oh, one. No, yeah. I get that. Yeah, it's kind of thinking about design, not too focused on the aesthetic, but on the on the person, right? This is design with purpose. And um, yes. yeah, Craigslist has a purpose and it isn't to be fancy. You know, it's not a fancy place where you, you can get fancy things, but it's- Yeah, I think I always want to get fancy. And so, and, and we, Aaron and I probably hear this when we, you know, go to any sort of marketing event and you do too, but is that still, how is that benefiting your brand? You have to separate mm -hmm. your own sort of beliefs and likes from serving a purpose, like as you so eloquently summarized, Aaron Keller. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now. Aaron has had a, a bit of time to think about that. Yeah. No, well, and I knew that Elizabeth would say something. And I was like, yes. I mean, <laughs> the way that the way that I think about it, and I, I would say that this is the other side of it, right? Like, I am not a designer. I appreciate good design, and I push my team um, always and myself to break down what good design is. But at the end of the day, I'm pretty nerdy about all these things. So when I think about, you know, when I think about the equation of what is it we're selling, right? What do we make? What do we really believe? It's that piece that I'm like, can we design against that, right? So um, it's our promise. It's our promise to the world. It's like what we're saying that we stand for. And then looking at it the other side and saying like, okay, again, starting with the audience, right? Like who is this for? Um, does it capture their attention? what benefit are you trying to convey here? And what are the reasons to believe? Like it gets pretty formulaic in my mind. Mm. Um, you know, what's the call to action? And so I um, probably am made fun of by my team because that's like the, the exercise I'll make everyone go through when they answer. And I mean, that started way back in the day um, at General Mills when I was working on brand champions with mm. the amazing Mark Addix, right? Like we just mm. sat down and, and over the years, I think that's served really, really well is thinking, yes, there's good high design, highly functioning. How do you measure the function? Mm. It's in your, you know, key brand benefit reasons to believe. And then boom, boom, boom. You can actually create a checklist against that. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Yeah. Way to drop in Mark Addicts in the conversation. Too. And always. <laughs> always. always. Wherever you yeah. can. Yeah. Minnesota <laughs> hero. That's Most great. amazing. Yep. Good, good juju. <laughs> That's great. Um, thank you both. Now, let's shift gears really quickly. Um, we, we, we've talked about entrepreneurship. And you hear people talk about entrepreneurship, right, within these larger organizations. Um, and, and you both clearly have helped lead the marketing, the growth, you know, the innovation efforts across multiple sectors over the course of your careers. Um, I'd love to hear from both of you, please, your perspectives on some of those key character characteristics. We've talked about resilience, um, but when it comes to uh, the grit that comes with entrepreneurship and then within an organization, how you're guiding a team and navigating certainly through challenging times like a pandemic, what skills would you say um, that you've pulled forward um, and that would be entrepreneurs um, and leadership leaders um, would uh, would be pretty critical for success? Who wants to take that one first? I can go first on this one. Okay. Go. And also, Aaron, I'm expecting you to flash up your prop now, by the way. By the way, when we talk about intrapreneurship. Oh, intrapreneurship. Right. right. <laughs> the new cover of Startup. Yes. Good, good. Exactly. Thank you. Right. There we go. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, oh. honestly, Amol Dixit is a hero of mine. So I also love the cover. Nice work, yeah. everyone. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So, and he's like the, the, I'm just excited to see what he comes forward with, you know? Um, mm -hmm. So I, when I think through attributes and I also hire against these attributes too, mm -hmm. um, it comes down to curiosity, connectedness, and creativity. And I think curious is number one, always ask questions, ask questions, don't assume, don't assume. Right. Um, and I think that if you can do that at the same time, realizing that pretty much everyone you're working with wants to do good and wants to do the right best thing. So that connectedness and then offering up creative solutions using constraints and saying like, okay, you know, we can do this, we can't do that, but actually lots of times that unlocks new possibilities. So not being afraid of that, you know, ambiguity or kind of the way it was always done. Right. And I, I think if you, if you can approach it that way, then whether you're an entrepreneur, an entrepreneur, whatever you are, yep. I mean, you're just serving up the benefit. Like you're creating things that are awesome solutions and really fun to work on. So I, I think it, it's the same both in a company, on your own. Right. That's what I think. Crosses over. Right. It translates well across. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's great. And it's meaningful, I think, to mm -hmm. think that way, have that mindset. Right. Thank you, Erin. Love that. Elizabeth. Sure. I think I can speak to smaller startup life. And the two biggest lessons I've learned as far as grit and resilience they're only going to come if you really care about what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I don't know how to fake that. Maybe yeah. I know there are people out there who can, if they're doing it for just the money, but that's where that comes from is caring. Um, and then the hardest lesson that I've learned again and again from people like Aaron, from people like my current CEO is not holding on so tightly to the idea to what your business model is and mm -hmm. just pivoting before it is too late. And that's how we keep moving. And also knowing when to walk away. Yeah. Which is the hardest. Yeah. The hardest. The hardest. The hardest. Yeah. yeah. And I always tell, I always tell younger employees or people I'm mentoring or people who are in the middle of a business that maybe isn't working, you take it all with you everything. I mean, we, we can all look back at our careers. Aaron and I can definitely look back at our businesses and they all are part of, you know, their breadcrumbs, their stepping stones, they yeah. lead to the next thing and be excited for whatever the next thing is too, while you're, while you're in it. Love that. That's right. I always learn. Right. Always. Yeah. Always. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. Yeah, that's Thank really you good. both. <clears throat> that is, um, yeah, we're in an interesting time here related to that and um, and keeping people inspired and excited about their jobs. Um, we are going through what some are calling the great resignation. Um, that's mm -hmm. a fascinating thing that we've all seen and observed, I'm sure, from perhaps the outside. Any thoughts on how you retain really good people, how you keep them around, how you help them find their North Star, their, their um, purpose in life? Um, as you both are leaders in your fields. Aaron, you want to take that one? Sure. Um, yes, the great resignation. We talk about it a lot at Caribou. Um, mm. I wish I could say that, you know, Caribou is immune to the great resignation. We are not. Um, although I will say that by putting forward what the themes that were important to our team or are important to our team, I think has served us better than most. Mm -hmm. I would like to think that. I hope that mm -hmm. the numbers say that, but at the same time, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's hard, right? When you read about what's driving it, which I'm obsessed with, again, back to curiosity. Like I really wanna mm -hmm. understand the mm -hmm. themes. Um, you know, I think most people point to pay cause it's really the easy, the easy thing, right? Really tangible to say, this is what I feel like I deserve to make. This is what I feel like I should be making. I need this, you know, all, all of those things, right? But if you look at the surround, like people wanna make an impact. People care about who they work with. I mean, to Elizabeth's point, like it's really hard to fake it for most yeah. people. Yeah. Um, so it's been, it's been challenging. And I think it's really required us at, at Caribou specifically to go back and say, what are the themes that are really important here? You know, it's, um, we're stepping up our game with voice of team. Um, it's something that we know we need to do and we're excited to do it. 
Like we just really want to make sure everyone on our team feels included, important. I mean, everyone is important. So I think those are the themes that we're finding are, are really breaking through, mm -hmm. you know, from a monetary standpoint. I mean, we're, we're looking at all the themes. Let me say that. So that's like one area that I think most people miss, which is why I started with it. I think though, from the monetary side too, it's connecting things like tipping, for example, and making sure that's something that's in every single interaction, which, you know, it's interesting to watch it at restaurants too, because um, what most people don't know is that companies absorb a lot of that increase in taxes and other, you know, boring, blah, 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 financial things that mm -hmm. our CFO constantly reminds me about. Right. So like, it's actually an impact to the business, even though most people think it just comes right from the guest. And so I think it's been really interesting to actually watch how restaurants are handling that, mm -hmm. you know, what we're doing, because at the end of the day, it, you know, you have to, it has to work for you. And usually that goes back to like Maslow's hierarchy of needs when you think about all the things. Um, so we try and we try and break it down that way, but it's, it's challenging and it's very real. Yeah. Yeah, it is. That's a great answer. I have some other thoughts later that I'll share there. Specific to <laughs> Thank you. Elizabeth. Okay. Well, I'll be the one who's a big fan of the great resignation. Good, this good. is a long time oh, coming. Oh, the contrarian to yeah, I love it. This yeah. is how people are going to find their North Star. Yeah. They're yeah. able to yeah. under the restrictions have been lifted in so many ways. And obviously geographically, virtually, yeah. all of this is conducive to people not having not having an excuse to not think about what they really want for themselves, for their families. And then on the employer side, it's freeing us up to hire talent from all over the country, if not the world, because mm -hmm. we don't have to reload them. They can work anywhere. You can hire from bigger talent pools in bigger markets. I mean, I just think it's creating so much flexibility and so much opportunity from everyone for everyone involved. And I'm not going to get into like working from home, but um, yeah, I think the shift needed to happen and it was really dramatic. It is still dramatic, but it's giving everyone pause. I mean, I, I wish that for everyone. Yeah, yeah. And, and let me say this, cause this is, this is, I think being intentional about what you do is super important, right? And mm -hmm. so for that, I 100% agree. And actually that's, I guess that's where Elizabeth, you said it really nicely. Cause I'm like, it's not just about how much you make, it's really what you do and what you want to do. Right. And so, and I, I think that's, that's the part that we can, that maybe is being overlooked and that we can all spend some time on because it's led to some great conversations of being like, well, what does career mapping look like? You know, like really good things that are going to serve everyone very well. Um, and I, I'm excited for that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and not to mention, we've learned that productivity does not suffer when, mm -hmm. when we work virtually. People worked harder than ever in a pandemic. Mm -hmm. If anything, we need to start putting in some checks and balances there so we're not rolling out of bed sick and coming to our desks. So we know that. I mean, my next mission is to get rid of the 40 hour work week, you know, single handedly. But, um, <laughs> You know, Erin is an incredible boss. I would love to have her. And I think we both put forth trust in our employees and we assume positive intent, no matter where you are, no matter what the work setup is. And that's a big, that's a big piece of retention too. And, and yeah. um, we've worked with, we. I think, I'm sorry, Erin, I'm totally speaking for you, but giving people, we always have known that giving people autonomy and flexibility and supporting their work-life balance is critical to not only productivity but retaining them. So that's going to continue to be a theme, even if it yeah. looks even more extreme now. Yeah, great. You, feel free to speak for me, Elizabeth, because I think. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll just, just speak for you. But like, I think that, you know, yeah. on that note, um, right? When it comes down to like intent, integrity, and you know, I beg some of my team team members to take time off mm -hmm. um you know when I feel like it's it, they're pushing too hard because if you don't bring your full self to work then I mean that's that's sad for the company that you're working for like the best mm -hmm. ideas and the best things don't usually come from that you know 5 p.m meeting 
They come from being outside in nature or they come from, you know, taking time, you know, vacationing with friends or family. It's like, that's what it's all about. And that actually goes back to like the whole, you know, what you sell, what you make, and then what you believe. If you can do things that align with the, what your brand stands for, what they believe, Mm -hmm. those ideas can come from anywhere. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the the thinking work. I mean, it is we're in intellectual work. We're in we're in the thinking business, and you can't Mm -hmm. turn the brain off, right? Mm -hmm. So why try to? And it is fascinating how the the house or home has become the productive place versus the office become the unproductive place. They've flipped in their roles, and I don't know if they'll ever go back. Yeah, and I love Elizabeth. You made a great point, though. Now we have to look at the balance of mm-hmm. made several great points, but the one that just resonated with me. Um, <laughs> yeah, and now we are we're doing so much more in our home. How do you strike that balance so that 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 our employees don't think that it's a requirement that you're right if you're sick at home but you roll over to your desk because it's that convenient? Where do we draw that line? And I think it's always evolve. It's going to continue to evolve, and we have to to find a way to strike that balance yeah Yeah. and it it really depends too on the size of your company and your industry and how much collaboration needs to take place how much you know people need to come to the table with creative ideas that I I think we all miss just being able to walk by someone's desk and point at something or ask a quick question and it's done now we have to set up a meeting or we get into slack and that is that is very inefficient but what we all on this panel probably, I mean, have to keep front and front and center is that we've already done, we've done the long corporate hall from, you know, 22 years on, we've watched the leaders, how they, how they behave in a meeting. We know all of the things to do to create an agenda and we've been (laughs) developed quite a bit. So I never want to take for granted that someone in their twenties needs exposure to that, that they're not going to get on a screen And, and I think I read somewhere there, we don't want any orphans. We don't want people who are new to a company. I mean, my husband works for an ad agency here in San Francisco. I want to say they have a dozen employees that they hired in COVID that they're just now meeting for the first time. So to come in new that way, I I don't want to underestimate what that must feel like. I mean, Aaron, you you started in COVID. So, right. Or pretty close. (laughs) I care right before. Yeah. yeah. So what was that like? Oh, I'm asking the questions so. <laughs> now. Please ask questions of each other. Because I'm sure yeah, Aaron, I'd love to hear that too. You have podcasts. Yeah. I love that. Um, you guys had to know this was gonna happen. Like we're just treating this as our own little Zoom call. Sorry. Uh, I don't should. I'm <laughs> kidding. Um, we do get pretty deep though, don't we, when we're just talking one-on-one too. Yeah. Uh, you know, for for me, um, and I'm also like really in tune with that. We've had a few people on our team start and Um, I mean, I just really got nosy. Like I just would like set up meetings with people and I'm like, this is going to be a little awkward at first, but we're going to do this and we're going to do it with cameras on. And we're going to do it pretty regularly because we need to get to know each other this way, you know? Um, and it's been, it's been good. I mean, I would say that we were really lucky lucky, smart. I don't know. That's a whole other thing, but, um, but to have my Microsoft teams in place before we, um, all went virtual because now we just use that as our backbone for a lot of meetings. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know what? It's funny because we have partners that we work with outside of caribou and they're like, I knew I had a caribou meeting today, so I was going to be on camera. So I got ready, but I'm like, that's what we try and do is we really try and show up however we can, we show up for the people. That's great. That's great. Yeah. In that same vein, um, when we talk about culture, we've had a lot of conversations during thinking like about culture, because I think it's a critical thing to address now in this remote environment and curious how organizations are maintaining that. And to your point, Aaron, it's like, yeah, we're going to do this cameras on because it's the only way we're, we can connect right now. Um, and you know, when we're not in the office, so I'm curious how both of you are maintaining what could be, you know, culture and, and just those connections in within your organizations. Um, how have you made that shift? Who wants to take that one first? Well, I have a much smaller company. So yes. I our culture, which means, you know, 10 people. So our culture is very much dictated by everyone's personality. 
coming yeah. to the fore. There, there's no, there's no one person setting the tone. There's no, there's no, you know, architect, house, whatever. Aaron knows all right, the right. terms that I don't know, <laughs> um, which makes it all the more important what that energy that you're bringing to the table. I mean, mm -hmm. I think we are all, I mean, every leader, anyone in a smaller company or within a team, you, you yeah. can shift the whole day. You can shift the culture in an hour. So yeah. even on a screen and almost even more on a screen. So I don't have a hard, fast answer to this, but I, the culture is day to day. And, and I guess it comes back to, I mean, I work in a wellness business, so you better mm -hmm. believe we all really care about wellness. Mm -hmm. And it's even more apparent when people are burnt out because what does that say about our culture if we're burnt out <laughs> and we're right. preaching, we're preaching, you know, stress relief to people. So yeah. I, I try to, I try to check that as often as I can when I see, you know, when I see that burnout, when I see that anxiety bubbling up and as Aaron, like Aaron said, I mean, really giving people permission to take a break, yeah, take a day off, yeah. let some things go. And um, I'm a big fan of imperfection and that's part yeah. of our culture too. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Being aware of what's happening to you with your employees. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I love, and I'm this, as Erin was saying, when she's having these meetings one-on-one -on -one and just starting any, you know, one-on-one -on -one or the end of the week or the all hands or whatever it is with not your agenda, but how are you doing? Mm -hmm. How are you doing? This is right. Seems simple, but <laughs> it seems simple. Yeah. But we gotta talk, we gotta talk about it. The lines are really blurred more than ever. Yeah. 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 I love that. I love that. And I would say that, you know, for a company our size, we obviously have the architecture. You do. You do. We don't actually have a house, but we have a brand on the page. No, you know, I use like the house wrong. The house is free. <laughs> It's a brand, brand house. It's not a culture house. house. It's a brand house. <laughs> but you know, at the at the top of whatever it is, we have our purpose statement, and then we have at the bottom we have our core values, and everything in between is like all the important things about our company, right? That that anyone can look at and be like, okay, I have a sense for what's important here and what to prioritize. Yeah. And I think that the the values piece is really important, right? And I love I love our values. I'll just share them, not to be a commercial, but just because I think it's really important to actually. Think about meaningful values that maybe in a board meeting people are like hmm well how is that gonna help me where i'm sitting and we're like that's not the point <laughs> the point <laughs> is you know i mean it, it will by the way because like you can document all the things but um our core like we i'll say this and then i'll go back to core values but like right now we're currently meeting with a lot of potential franchisees right because we mm -hmm. announced that we were going to start doing that and there's been a ton of interest um we start every presentation with our purpose statement and our core values because we're like that's how it's going to work like yeah we're excited about x y and z but if this isn't understood and agreed upon then we should probably not have the conversation so you know our core values are support one another take ownership make fun happen which is one of my favorites right so like we actually carve out time to make fun happen um serve with love huge mm -hmm. huge huge and be yourself. Mm -hmm. And so like, if we create mm -hmm. that space for people and if people are not acting in a certain way, like um, we're really clear about it, you know, and we're, we give that feedback. So mm -hmm. to Elizabeth's point, you know, it's like, it's whether it's felt or it's stated, cause I've also worked at a company where I helped create the values and I felt like they were not actually implemented and carried through. And eventually the reason I left, it's like, mm -hmm. if you, you have to have them, you have to attend to them, you have to live them, you have to think about everything you do. If someone needs a time out because they're just overwhelmed, take the time and come back, you know, refreshed. But that's that's how we do it at Caribou. And I feel like that's really the most successful way to do it in a company this, yeah. this size. Yeah, that's right. And I bet you both live that way. That's how you lead. So not, you're not I only do. saying here are our values, but it's reflected in the way that you lead and your employees mm -hmm. do that. So yeah, mm -hmm. I can. We're, we're very fun. <laughs> You're always creating fun. <laughs> as, as Aaron was talking, I just noticed the caribou cup. 
on the shelf. Oh, okay. in the background. I know yeah. I got all my things. <laughs> you like, look at my candle. It was bought Weedies. to me by a friend who's actually on this call, but like, it's like stuff like that. Like, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Things can happen. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Love that. Great. Um, so, Aaron, the, um, we met right before you went in to the machine. Remember that? And uh, we had kind of a nice little honest conversation because my relationship with Carib at that time was not in a good place. I was not a fan of the brand at that moment in time, right before the pandemic. And I remember saying to you like, really? That's, it seems so sad there, right? They don't seem to have a purpose, a direction, all this other stuff. It just didn't seem right. And I thought you had so much energy in going into that. I said, well, you've got your work. And I think other people had said that to you at the same time. So I wasn't the only one that said, well, you've got your work cut out for you going there. And I have to say that my caribou, and of course, this is my neighborhood caribou. I don't know if it's everyone, but it's definitely mine. They have, they, they're living those values. As you've just described them, I'm like, holy shit. That's what they, I get up to the window and used to be like, here's your coffee, move on. Come on, get out of line, keep moving. It would felt industrial. It felt like one year they're trying to sell me more at the, at the, um, at the, whatever the order area. And then they were trying to just move me on as quick as they could. Now it's a friendly voice. They're getting to know me. I'm getting to know them. Like, oh my goodness, something's changed. I don't know if it was all you. But I suspect uh, there was some. No, influence. I cannot claim it. So I will tell you oh this. My goodness. this is interesting. You were not the only one to tell me this. And I know I have friends that used to work at Care, but like I get it. Yeah. Um, or I got it. Our, I, I have to credit our CEO, John Butcher. I mean, he is really amazing, came from Target. Yes. A lot of people in town know him. But the first thing yeah. he did when he came in was go work at a store. Of course, we all do. Super important, right? It's mm -hmm. really important that you understand just how hard the job is of our team members in store because it is so stinking hard. I think we left and the GM of the store I was at was like, I think we both agree that this is not going to be in my future to be a GM at a store because I was a design. <laughs> I was like, I'll just go wash dishes. You know, like it's hard. It's hard, hard, yeah. hard. Mm -hmm. So we don't have it perfect. You know, it's an ever evolving thing. And Aaron, I'm so happy to hear that because my local store is in the process of sort of reinventing itself, mm -hmm. my local caribou. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, we still have some work to do. I'm going to be totally yeah. honest, but yeah. Our CEO came in, worked at a store, and the first thing he noticed is that people were like checking lists, right? Like that was the most important thing is to make sure you got everything done on your list. Yeah. And he was like, uh-uh. Like mm -hmm. Caribou Coffee was founded to eradicate impersonal service in coffee. Yeah. That's why it was founded so 20, almost 29 years ago, you know? And so it's like, it's he brought that back. And that was actually the reason that I decided to join was because of the conversations with yeah. him on that. Yeah. It seems like you almost have a little culture within each of the shops, right? It seems like there's something going on there, you know, that has to tie back to the overall, but it's fascinating. I'm curious what you're going to do. You've kind of mentioned it already a little bit, but as you move into franchise, how are you going to keep that? Is you're going to, uh, you know, because I, I want to, I'm going to have that same feeling when I go to one in Dallas. I'm never going to be in Dallas, but you know, some other city, because <laughs> I do look for caribou in other cities and I, you know, it's good to hear that you're going to be expanding beyond. Um, any thoughts on that and how you're going to keep that culture as tight as it is? Well, something that we've done um, is we've instituted a really big relationship with Medallia. So um, we love Medallia. It's great voice of guest, voice of um, mm -hmm. team or voice of employee, voice of, you know, all the, the I, we call it voice of guest, voice of team. Um, we also have voice of partner. So what most people don't know is we have almost 300 non-traditional franchise or licensed locations. So, you know, within grocery stores or at airports or whatnot. Um, and so it's really important for us to make sure that there's continuity. And I will say that our partners want to make sure there's continuity as well, right? Like yeah. they know that for each point we go up in net promoter score, that means dollars. So, um, that's that's great that's how we um we're still i mean i would still you know we're about a year in which it actually takes a really long time to implement that kind of work mm -hmm. but well yeah doing great work that's cool that's great Thanks. um <laughs> i didn't get to a little bit of a question <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah. no that was a lovely break all i was thinking was is it true that caribou beans are better than starbuck beans that's like always been the yes Yes, well, I don't have one here. So we have Blue Bottle and yeah, but I have, yeah, I was curious. I, I was, 
I know Aaron is Aaron Keller is being very, you know, diplomatic, but I didn't know if you were going to start talking about the the coffee you didn't like or you didn't like the environment. So that was I love hearing about what you're up to. I don't have a neutral to. neutral the brand space, but yeah. I think we have our personal vote, Aaron. Yes, yes you do. Yes, we do. Yeah. Um yeah. Love this. I, I want to quickly, um, we talked about the, we've talked a lot about employees and internal culture. Want to shift to customers and consumers mm-hmm. and listening. Um, and Aaron, I want to start with you because there's a quote that I want to reference. And then Elizabeth, I want to hear your thoughts here. So this was back in 2012, Fast Company interviewed Aaron. Mm-hmm. And, and, I, and I quote, you said, the answer is to listen to your customers, but not necessarily always give them exactly what they're asking for. Your job as a company is to always be in front of what you think they are going to want down the road. Love that. Still highly applicable. Fast forward to 2021 and the future, but would love to expound upon that if you could. And, and your thoughts present day. And then Elizabeth, I want to hear the same with regard to how, you know, listening, being ahead, being, you know, forecasting on behalf of your customer and then thinking about what it is that you need to do to be proactive as a brand. Um, so Aaron, start with you and then Elizabeth, love to hear. <clears throat> okay. Um, that's so funny. By the way, that interview was done in a car at South by Southwest. So I had no voice. Nice. I, I, know. Know. I was a hot mess, but I do remember actually saying that. And you still I mean it. Believe in it. I believe you still mean it. Let's start there. Okay. Okay. Um, But it's just such an awkward thing. Okay. So (laughs) here's, here's where it was going with that then. And now, you know, um, I mean, it's our job to make things delightful, easy, enjoyable. Like that's the work that we should be doing. So when we know, or think we know something, it's really important to listen and to take notes on kind of the why behind the why, right? And then fuse that together with how we can best serve it up. So that includes trends, that includes, you know, pillars of the business. Um, we, we sit in this unique, you know, versus the competition. So like, if you even think back to the marketing days of the three C's, right? It's like, we have to do the calculations for our people. And, it, and when we do it well, then we serve up something that they couldn't even dream was possible because it's not their job. Like they're thinking about all the things they need to get done that day, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, the best example of this um, for me was Red Stamp when, and I think Dan Wick's on this call, my CTO, Dan Wick. <laughs> um, you know, it was like one of those moments. I'll never forget it. We were sitting um, in our big, huge warehouse and, and Dan came in and he had an Apple 3ES, whatever in his hand. And he was like, I think these things are going to be kind of big. And if our mission <laughs> is really about making relationships stronger, then shouldn't we be here if we think people are going to be here mm-hmm. versus on, you know, the interwebs, if, if people are like trying to get away from their computers and actually live their lives. Yeah. Um, it's that mm-hmm. kind of stuff, right? Like no one could have said to us, like, I wish that I could think, wish, invite and announce on my phone, right? Like they, or, you know, what would be really nice. And this was a issue I had, my whole family is all over the freaking country. And you know, they would send presents and I'm like, okay, present equals thank you note for me. Uh, really what I want to show them is how much my son, who was very young at the time, you know, is enjoying this, right? Like we take those problems and we get guidance from individuals, but only we know like how we could package that up and make it really special for them. Mm. So it's yeah. not minimizing the input. It's not, it's actually just maximizing the output and delighting people along the way. Love that. Great response. So yes, still applicable today, even yeah. from South by Southwest in 2012, <laughs> fast forward 2021. That's great, Erin. Thank you. Elizabeth, I'd love to hear, and, and also just specifically health and wellness and how the shift to digital, yeah. just you obviously yeah. heard yeah. there's a yeah. need. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. That, yeah, I'll take that invitation. I, I love to say with, with holistic healing, with alternative medicine, people don't know what they don't know. They don't know what's available to them. They don't know how much support is out there that is not at the doctor's office. And I am pro Western mm-hmm. medicine, but we have doctors coming to us asking to, for partnership with holistic healing because mm-hmm. they know that there is a bigger picture. And it's a, you know, it's a $200 billion market 
And yet people don't know how to access it. They don't have the tools. They don't know who, they don't know where. And so we're actually, we just launched a digital group class. So they're all group wellness classes and holistic modalities this month. And we are piloting that with Blue Cross Blue Shield in the new year. So we now have insurance companies. Thank you. Yep. It's really exciting. Insurance companies who want to provide this not only for their members, but for their employees. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I am clearly really pumped about it, Mm -hmm. but in that sense, I mean, we want to get ahead of people. People, again, don't know what is out there for them and Mm -hmm. making it accessible, making it affordable is is our mission right now. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Wow. That's wonderful. Congratulations, by the way. That's cool. That's cool. So I'm curious about, this is kind of out of left field for you, Elizabeth, but uh, I had a conversation probably a year, maybe a year and a half ago. I know you're going to know what that, but as it relates to mental health and as it relates to having people, you know, just to talk to and have a conversation with, um, have you heard anything around um, a version of Alexa or of Siri being your your bot. Uh, that's a, the wrong term for it, but you know what I mean. Like using people using them as their therapist in a way, um, or that developing into something. Um, this gentleman was working on a personality, like a new Alexa mm-hmm. that would be your therapist, which is in one sense kind of scary um right like oh goodness yeah. really no but then very accessible I don't know how I feel about that and I'm curious how you do <laughs> if that's just like oh right. no I don't know what you're talking about there Keller well there's well I mean I'm all for any sort of virtual teletherapy I think that would be really limited. There's, there's probably a certain amount of like canned responses where you could have an introductory conversation with someone who is trying Mm -hmm. to assess whether they need more support for Mm -hmm. their mental health. I wouldn't want Siri to diagnose a mental illness. Yeah, that would be dangerous. Yeah. I mean, I would love it more as a, Hey, I'm feeling anxious. Can you tell me, can you give me some journal prompts or is there, do I need a med? like would a meditation help? Like I would love someone who's in your ear giving you some, some positive encouragement. Oh my gosh, no one quote me on this. Alison Kaplan, if you are on here. Um, <laughs> She's still here. Uh, yeah, um, yeah something that's, you know, something that's, you know, a little bit uplifting, but I, yeah, I think that's super, li- I think that's super limiting. This is such a personalized experience. Yeah. And without being able to go back and forth in real time and have, I mean, can you, I, I'm picturing like an intercom, just like the bot going through, you know, the FAQs and can oh, you imagine yeah. like, I would just be saying Painful. representative over and over and over again. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a human experience, right? Human. It is. It yeah. is. Yeah. It's way too human. Yeah. yeah. But I like it for, you know, some pointing you in the right direction, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It is a we'll curious see. area, right? It's how much, where do the bots stop? Um, or where do we stop the bots? <laughs> Technology um, has a place, but it, uh, not in that <laughs> but, space. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, now I'm curious if you two, um, I, we hadn't talked about this previously, but if there's a brand organization that comes to mind, that you admire for what they're doing right now to improve the world. Pretty, I have one. I have I, one. Oh, Aaron, go. You're first. Athleta. Athleta, oh. athleta, athleta. I love what they're okay. doing. I love what they're doing with body, body positivity. I love what yeah. they're doing with the fact that they're a certified B Corp. Mm-hmm. Yep. I love their fashion, their technology. Like, I mean, I don't know. That one hits it out of the park for me because I just feel like more than ever, we need to stop saying things that we're not doing and actually do the things we say and say the things we do. Yeah. And yeah. I feel like that's, they're a great example of that yeah love and they've got great product at the same time so it's a good quality right. product brand purpose mm-hmm. and you walk the walk that's great good example elizabeth yeah. yeah i've heard other women say that athleta just makes them feel good about themselves and we will not name other 
athletic wear brands who maybe don't, but yeah, they, they've definitely struck a chord. Um, you know, one, I, wait, sorry, right. Elizabeth, one cute right. thing that I yeah. heard an uh, eight-year-old say the other day is I even love, and maybe this is not just Athleta, but I love that they show moms and daughters together because it always makes me feel really like good and secure. And I'm like, even that, like yeah. think about all the crap that, you know, eight-year-olds have to deal with, well, maybe, hopefully, I don't know. I'm not judging. Yeah. Uh, in the world of social media, depending that's on so what their venue is, right? That age, yeah. eight to 12. And the fact that there's like a brand that makes them feel good because mm -hmm. they feel cool and comforted. That's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah. Also, this is all we wear now, you know? So <laughs> we live I in mean, athleisure. I mean, maybe not today, but yeah. From the waist down. Well, I'll go, I'll continue with the fitness um, theme and Peloton, Peloton. Oh, yeah. Really? Interesting. Yes. Wow. Yes. Again, we are not in person. Maybe Soul Cycle or your yoga studio was just like your lifeline and you mm -hmm. loved your instructor and you love your community. And the fact that we can get that in our home. I mean, mm -hmm. I truly feel like I know these instructors, you know, and like mm -hmm. so do a million other people, but <laughs> it is a whole experience. And I, yeah, I, don't, I can't think of anything quite like that. And I can't remember life before it. And yeah. I cannot, um, I can't think of another time when I'm able to hop from my desk to my bike at five o'clock and ride to the Foo Fighters and not have to like, which I did last <laughs> night and not have to leave my house. And not, I mean, it's just, yeah. I think it's changed how we, whether you, whether it's Peloton or like the class is another incredible online or Obey Fitness. These are all, these are all mm -hmm. virtual fitness platforms, mm -hmm. but they're giving people a lot of flexibility to save time and yeah. work out at yeah. home and feel good and not have all the distractions and, but also feel part of, feel connected to whoever's on the screen. The community. Yeah. yeah. That's really yeah. hard to do. I mean, yeah. that's also, I'm now I'm on a tangent, but I think about it for well set, like the talent is very important. Finding those mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's huge. Yeah. 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 They definitely deliver on the experience. Yeah. It's critical to that. Yeah, fascinating. The energy they bring to it, and yeah, yeah, wow. that's an unexpected one. It's delightful. Cool. It's delightful. Neither of you mentioned Meta and Facebook or Instagram. I'm surprised. <laughs> Wait, who's Meta? Who's, who's Meta? Meta? That's who's it. Meta? Who's Meta? Who's <laughs> <laughs> Meta? Ellie, that's a look over here. Look over here. Yeah, exactly. Hey, stop, stop, <laughs> killing. stop killing. Exactly. Oh, I mean, funny. one of my favorite days was when it all went down. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. The fallout, yeah. the conversations. Yeah. Hebrew yeah. for death. Mm. I think Zuckerberg is Jewish, but whatever. Anyway, um, the uh, any other um, thoughts before we end our conversation, Kelly? Any other questions you've got for our guests? You know, I always love to throw out the what book have you read recently? that you ooh, that has inspired you that you recommend to our audience do oh, podcasts yeah. count mm -hmm. yeah actually yes absolutely love we're it. gonna take it love. across channels it does not have to yeah. be a physical book good well and actually it's funny i mean i to be honest i listen more than i read now um yeah. but i the um actually a woman on my team who i really admire and like a lot um, she recommended, I listened to the Liz, I think it's Wiseman interview on dare to lead with Brene Brown all around oh. impact leaders. Okay. Mm -hmm. yep. Um, and it was, it was really good. So I have the book on order. I don't have it yet, but that's, what's going to be on my nightstand. Counts. I think. So it counts. You know? Yeah. But impact that's leadership, cool. it's the Brene Brown dare to lead. It's like, it's, it was a really smart interview. And it's, you know, one of the things that I've been taking away from it because one of the things I think I need to improve on is this whole idea of managing between um, feeling safe and feeling, um, you know, inspired or like mm. you can do scary things. I think I tend to kind of err on the side because scary is not hard for me. So I think I tend to err over <laughs> here. And so I'm, that's, that's how I'm like rethinking yeah. 
my leadership style. And that's why I bring it forward because yeah. I just think all of us, right, probably have these points where we're like, what do we need to do to keep getting better? Yeah, love that. Okay, great. Noted. Thank you. You have enough time for Elizabeth to Elizabeth. Find hers. Yes. <laughs> and I want to end on a on a Debbie Downer moment here. Um, of course, I'm reading lots of self-help books per usual. So, but really <laughs> impressed with these two. Um, the Way Out, which is Alan Gordon, and he runs the like the Center for Pain Management in LA. Okay. I tend to be on the spiritual woo-woo side of things, but I know so many people with chronic pain have had it myself over the years and I'm fascinated with the mental, the mind, the emotional connection to chronic pain. I think this is huge. I think this is gonna be, this is gonna blow up mm -hmm. um, how we look at, um, how we look at how we contribute to our own pain and so many people are suffering, so. Yeah really yeah. big fan whether you have like a lower back that like triggers when you get stressed like that's real mm -hmm. and there's a way out um also lots of drinking and covid lots of yeah for all i mean i'm not going to speak for everyone but i read and i pick it up from time to time obviously i pick it up when i feel like i've had too many zoom happy hours but quit like a woman holly whitaker who also launched mm -hmm launch basically an alternative to AA that's huh. not religious based that's really designed for people who are I don't I don't know I don't know enough it's called Tempest I think um but some really good information like again about the science of alcohol huh. on our bodies on our brain yeah. and you know we we can talk about the cultural side of that all day but I find it really eye-opening to know exactly yeah what's what's going on so um those are some those are some That's true. what was the name of that book the second book was it the like a woman boy. like a quit like, like a woman. woman got it but you know i still read passages to my husband it's not it's more i think because she's a woman there's a, there's some you know patriarchy patriarchy like feminist piece but i really yeah i just that's great yeah it's it seems fascinating. It's like almost there's a trend and a counter trend going on around alcohol. Like yes, there is with all the alcohol, with there all is. the drinking mm -hmm. at home and everything else. But then yeah. a lot of people yeah. going dry. There's a massive. Well, you hear the sober curious, right? And right. Then you, and then exactly. Like, yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. and I mean, I live in California, so yeah. fewer people drink. Everyone is, you know, it's 4:20 here all the time. Oh and, right. Yeah. So. <laughs> Aaron, do you know um, what that means, Aaron Keller? I, I am I'm aware that you? we do have a cannabis oh. client. That's funny lady. <laughs> so, um, but we're learning that they're, you know, in moderation, that is much healthier. And I mean, alcohol yeah. is pure yeah. toxicity. By the way, everyone, I drink. Like this is it's yeah. because it's part of my life that I want to understand it better. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. By the way, people, I drink. That's by good. the way. Oh my that could be a book cover. By the way, people, I drink. Wow. Uh, this okay. Been great. I know. Well, this, this has been, been a wonderful. Great I want to keep going, but thank you for having us. Yes. Yes. Thank you. You're yeah, both yeah, wonderful. Thank you. thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you for, the for doing this with Elizabeth. me, Aaron. Thank you for doing this with me. Thanks for asking. Cool. Yes. Thank you all. And to our audience, uh, we look forward to seeing you in two Thursdays. We've got a new platform we're going to be on. We've got all kinds of exciting stuff coming up. Um, as we, I know, we're going to be live, live streaming. streaming. Restream. I know. Yeah. I know we're going to bring guys, you guys back. For that. Uh, we, we're we're going to do it back. For you, we're going to do the oh, restream with the two yeah, of yeah. good. We'll have you come My back. My cat's going to join, apparently. We've got a cat oh, guest. Cats. Cat guest. <laughs> I love it. All right. That's a great finish Thanks. right there. Thanks, you Thank guys. you. Good Thank you both. You. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Hey.